Welcome to this week's sermon from Spark. We are a community who believes we are deeply loved by God and seek to welcome, support, love, and serve every person we meet. We hope this message has something for you today. So when you came in, you probably saw something on your chair. It looked like this. It's a mask. It's not like a COVID mask, but like a superhero mask that um, you would use to, you know, hide your identity or to have a secret identity if you are a superhero. So I want you to take that mask, and you're also given a marker, and maybe if you need something hard to write on, there's a, a Bible underneath your chair. Um, so go ahead and look underneath your chair. Don't take the one from the person in front of you. Um, and... I want you to think for a second about what makes you, you. Who are you? How would you describe yourself? And I want you to write the words that you would use to describe yourself on this mask. Now, you might put things like your name, because for some of us, our names have meaning and value to us. You might put things like, um, your heritage, your race or ethnicity or where your family is from, if that's something that is meaningful to your identity. Maybe it's not. Maybe you put um, your biological sex, that you're male or female. Maybe you put your gender, how you, know, you identify as male or female, or that you are somewhere in between and that you um, aren't the most manly man or the most girly girl and that that's something that's important to you. Maybe you describe some of your characteristics that you're someone who values honesty. Maybe you put that you are someone who is loyal to friends and family. Write a few words to describe who you are. And as you're writing, I also want you to think about what is your superpower? Now, I'm not talking about like what superpower you might love to have, like if we lived in a fictional world where we could fly or teleport or become invisible, but what superpower do you have right here, right now? Because you all have a superpower. You all actually have probably many superpowers. But if you could pick one, what would be the superpower that you have to offer the world? And if you're struggling to think of something, an example of a superpower that I feel like I have or that I bring um, when I'm in spaces like this is that I listen. And that my superpower is listening when people need to be heard. Or that a superpower could be presence, that you show up for people no matter what, and you cheer them on. There's all different kinds of superpowers that you could have. So I want you to write down your superpower because we're starting a new sermon series based on The Incredibles, right? We watched the movie The Incredibles on Wednesday. I've heard people joking and quoting the movie this morning, and it sounds like you all had a lot of fun because it's a good movie, right? And maybe you haven't watched it in a while, and it was a good reminder that that was um, a great movie to watch. But in the movie The Incredibles, obviously The Incredibles are superheroes, right? And each of the members of the family have a different superpower, so can you help me remember um, the dad, Robert, his superpower is strength. Um, the mom, Elastigirl, so she can stretch and form different shapes, right, which is kind of cool throughout the movie. Then we have Violet, the oldest daughter, is invisible, and she can also create force fields to protect people, which is pretty awesome. Then we see Dash, it's kind of in his name, he's got speed, and he can run really, really fast. And then there's baby Jack-Jack, who we're still trying to figure out exactly what his superhero is, but he turns into a fireball, he like shoots layers out of his eyes, I don't know. We will find out who Jack-Jack's going to become, but each of them have their own superpower, right? Much in the same way that each of you have been gifted with superpowers. So we're going to read our scripture this morning, it comes from the book of Genesis, and we're reminding ourselves today that God made us, right? That God created us and that God calls us good. So we're going to go back and remind ourselves of the story of God creating human beings. Then God said, let us make human beings, humanity, in our image to resemble us 
so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on the earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them male to female, God created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply and fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and everything crawling on the ground. And then God said, now I give to you all the plants on the earth. Wait, what happened? Now I give to you all the plants on the earth and yield, that yield seeds and the trees whose fruits produce seeds with it. And these will be your food to all wildlife, to all birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give you the green grasses for food. And God saw everything that God had made, and it was supremely good. On the sixth day, when God created human beings, God calls us supremely good. This word, Good in the Bible is big. It's not, for us today, we hear like if somebody calls you good, you're kind of like, mm, that's middle so so. But the word in the Bible to describe good is like magnificent, magnanimous, most high, beautiful, wonderful. It's a bigger word than we might imagine it to be when we just hear someone say, oh, that's good, right? And God says, when God creates everything, I'm going to make them in my image. And so each of us bears the image of God. And when we think about who God is, we could spend a long time using lots of words to describe God, right? Let me just hear a couple of the words that you would use to describe God. Just shout them out. Loving, Loving caring, Powerful. hope, Powerful. faithful, Powerful. humble, Powerful. 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 Loyal. loyal, merciful, accepting, accepting. Everything. everything, thankful, so we have all these words to describe God, and God we know is just bigger than anything we could ever imagine, and God has given a piece of God's self to each of us. And so when we look around at all the beautiful, wonderful people that God has made, we see, because each of us is unique, just how big and wonderful and creative and beautiful God is. Because if each of us represents even just one small part of God, if you think of all of that put together, it's pretty mind-blowing to imagine who God is. But we each possess a bit of God's image in us. One of those things on your mask is something that it bears the image of God, is of God, and reflects God to the world. So God says when God made us, you are good. And then it, scripture continues to tell us this theme about how we're good, right? In the book of Psalms, the psalm writer praises God and says that I was knit together in my mother's womb, that I was made fearfully and wonderfully on purpose. And Jesus even tells people when he's here on earth that we, God knows the hair on our heads, the number of hairs on our heads. Yeah. Have you tried to count each of your hairs? I've tried. I know I lose like hundreds of them in a day all over my house, right? We, we have so much hair on our head, but God knows us so intimately that God could be like, ah, oh, yes, Javoris, 5,622,522 or whatever, right? God would know the exact number of hairs on your head. God would know the exact design of your fingerprint because God knows us better than we know ourselves because God designed us good, And, and we have superpowers, just like the Incredibles did. But there's something that happens right at the, that we learn right at the beginning of the movie about the Incredibles, that they are in hiding, right? That they can't actually be their superhero selves all the time. Does anyone remember why that they had to hide? Yeah. Because they didn't want people knowing their real identity. They didn't want people knowing their real identity, but yes. Mm -hmm. To the outside world, they cause too much damage. Yes. Okay, so there, there was a lot of damage and things that happened that maybe went awry sometimes when the superheroes were trying to save people. 
And so everyone in the world or in the town or country, wherever they were, said, it's not worth it for you to be your superhero self because it causes too much damage, there's too much risk, and so we'd rather not. And so instead, all of these superheroes are forced into hiding. They can't be their full and true authentic selves. They have to hide their gifts that they have been given. And you know, I think when I watch this movie, I think about how that's true for us sometimes too, right? If you look at your mask that you were writing your words on, I wonder if there are any of those things that are on that mask that you have felt at different times like you couldn't be, that you had to hide, that you couldn't tell someone about. So I want you to flip your mask over on the backside. And I want you to write down any of the things that you've ever felt like you've had to hide from the world about yourself or that you've been told aren't allowed or have been told aren't good. And I want you to write those there. And I hope and pray that someday, or maybe today is that day, that you would not have anything to write on the back of your mask, right? That we would be people who could live fully and completely as God made us to be and not feel like we have to hide any part of who we are or be told that any part of us is not good and made in the image of God. But you know, this happened, the same idea of having to hide, not only happens to the Incredibles, but it happens to Adam and Eve in the garden. So if we keep going in the book of Genesis, we just read from Genesis chapter one, but we're gonna read from Genesis chapter three in a minute because Adam and Eve were in the garden and they had a superpower. Did you know that Adam and Eve had a superpower? Their superpower was that they knew that they were loved without a shadow of a doubt. And because they knew that they were loved, they could freely be themselves, they could walk around without worry or shame or fear, and they could live in this perfect kind of utopia of heaven in the garden with God. Because they knew without a shadow of a doubt that they were loved. And that was their superpower. Until one day, what happened? There's a tree in the garden and then there was a creature that appeared and the creature was a serpent or a snake and the snake told them, this God that you love so much actually keeps secrets from you. Did you know that? That's what the serpent tells Adam and Eve and tells them that if they ate from from the tree with the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil that they would come to understand these secrets that God has been keeping from them. And then they would really understand who God is and who they are. And so we know that Adam and Eve ate from that tree. And then this is what happens next. During the day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. And they hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the garden's trees. And the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And the man replied, I heard your sound in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God said, who told you you were naked? Adam and Eve had the superpower of knowing without a shadow of a doubt in their mind that they were loved. And you know what? People who know they are loved, they don't have to hide. They don't have to be afraid or ashamed. Think about maybe people in your life who who have made you feel the most loved. They're the kind of people that when you're talking with them, you can be really honest and open. They're the kind of people who you know if you share some kind of deep, dark secret or fear that you're not gonna receive any kind of judgment from them. You know that even if you share something with them that might be an, an action that you did that wasn't good, that they're not going to say, well, you're just a trash human and forget that, right? They're gonna meet you where you are. They might share in the fact that whatever happened was not good, but they're not gonna leave you, right? You know that if you bear yourself to them, meaning you're open and honest with who you are, that they are not going to abandon you for it. That's love, right? And that's the love that Adam and Eve were so aware of up until the moment where they ate from the fruit. And then all of a sudden, fear and shame 
and uncertainty entered into their hearts and their minds and their bodies, and they felt the need to hide from God. And then God confronts them. And God knows because God gave them this superpower that this didn't come from them, right? That this idea of needing to hide was not something that was of them, but it was something that had been told to them. And so God asks the question, who told you? Who told you that you were naked? And so for us, we know that there have been people in our lives who have told us that we were not enough, that we were unlovable, that we were too tall, too short, too this, too that, that we shouldn't be fill in the blank. And maybe that voice came from your own mind because sometimes that happens, right? We start to believe lies that the serpent sometimes speaks to us through our thoughts, but more often than not, I think the serpent speaks through other people who tell us that for some reason or another that we are not good. And that's what happened to the Incredibles, right? That the world told them that their superhero powers were not good, that they were not necessary, and that they would prefer that they go into hiding and not be seen than to be their full and true selves. And you know, today, it's June 12th, it's Pride Month, it's a moment to acknowledge that in our world, for a long, long time, and still today, many people are told to hide parts of their identity, that they're not good or worthy. And that, friends, is sin. And it's not just our LGBTQ friends that are told to hide parts of our identity. We have other months of the year where we celebrate different kinds of people, like Black History Month or Hispanic Heritage Month or Women's History Month, because people have been told that parts of their identity are less valuable than others for a very, very long time. And while it's a lot harder to maybe hide your race than it is to hide your sexuality, that doesn't mean that people aren't felt, don't feel like they have to downplay who God made them to be in order to fit in with everybody else. And that, friends, is sin. It is not okay. And we say every Sunday when we come into this place that we are a family who believes we are deeply loved by God and that therefore we will strive to accept people for who God made them to be, exactly as they are, no qualifications, no exceptions, exactly where they are, as they are, who God made them to be. Because we're not meant to hide our superpowers. We see what happens to the Incredibles when they're forced to hide their superpowers. We see how it comes out even when they're trying their best to hide it, right? Mr. Incredible ends up throwing his boss through like multiple walls. He ends up denting his car. He ends up doing all this damage because he's not able to use his strength in the way that he's intended to use it. We see the way that Violet and Dash are constantly struggling with who they are and how they're supposed to fit in because they are coming to understand their superpowers and at the same time coming to understand that those are not allowed. When we are not allowed or told to hide part of who we are, it's not good for us. And we can't do it because we're not made to not do it. We're made to be who God made us to be. So we're made to be too tall or too short or too loud or too quiet or whatever it is that everybody says is too much. We are made to be that. And so we can't be anything else but that. And when we try to squelch the image of God that is in us, it hurts us. And you know what else it hurts? It hurts the kingdom of God and it hurts this world. Because we see how the world needed the Incredibles when the villains showed up, right? And how their powers helped make the world the better place. And the same is true about each one of you. The gifts and graces, the person that you are is needed in this world. Because there's no other Joseph, and there's no other JC, and there's no other Bones, and there's no other Miss Trinice. You are unique. And so when you pull yourself out of 
the world, if you take your piece out of the puzzle, we are not complete. Scripture tells us that we are the body of God, that the body of Christ, that sometimes we're like the hands and the feet and the eyes and the ears and all the things, and sometimes if we hide part of ourselves, we basically are making Jesus walk around without hands, without eyes, and that's not the way that the body of Christ was meant to be on this earth. So be who God made you to be. And do not allow the serpents of this world to tell you otherwise. Can you say, I am good? I am good. Oh, I'm going to see no allowing that. Say, I am good. Say, I am good. Say, I am good. You got to say it till you believe it. I am good. I am worthy. I am good. I am made in the image of God. You got to say it until you believe it, friends. And you got to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are good. Say, neighbor, you are good. And you got to remind each other that you are good. Because we all know that, that our friends sometimes come to believe that they are not good. And when we allow them to continue to believe that, we are also not living into who we're supposed to be. You are good. You are beloved. You are a child of the Most High God who created you uniquely and specifically and intimately and purposefully for this moment in this world. And I know from a personal moment, perspective, point of view, that you make my life better because of who you are. And this place would not be the same if it weren't for you. So let's pray. God, I give you thanks for the beauty of the people that are in this room. That some of us are tall and some of us are short. That some of us are one color and some of us are another. That some of us have blue eyes and some have brown eyes. Some have long hair and some have short hair. Some value kindness and some value loyalty. Some are great athletes and some are beautiful musicians. I pray and I give thanks, God, for the beautiful creati creativity of your creation represented here in this room. And God, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit to fill the hearts and minds and lives of these young people to know without a shadow of a doubt that your image is within them and that they are good and that they would reject and denounce any words or thoughts or ideas that would claim otherwise. God, we pray in the power of your Holy Spirit that you would cast out from our minds and our hearts any lies about who it is that we've come to believe about who we are. And instead, God, that we would absorb the truth, that we are beloved, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are powerful, that we have something to offer your kingdom here on earth. Fill us to overflowing with that knowledge so that we cannot help but share that love and truth with people around us and name the ways that we see your image in them. I give thanks to you, God, for this community, for these people, for who you've created them to be and the gift they are to me, to your kingdom, and to each person in this room. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry, follow the link in the description below. Peace be with you. Hey,